Well, this next story uh, hits uh, close to home for me uh, because I worked in the corporate world for an oh, extremely long period of time and experienced quite a bit of what this next story is about. CNN, Time Warner, and uh, Turner are being sued by two, in black, two black employees for uh, discrimination, employment uh, discrimination, advancement discrimination, etc., etc. And I just hope that this is just the beginning of other companies uh, who have not done the right thing facing daylight as far as uh, their discriminatory practices in advancement. Now there are some companies out there that do do the right thing. It's no ifs, ands, or buts. But there are a hell of a lot of companies out there that absolutely discriminate against black people and to some extent uh, Hispanics. But my focus obviously is on black people because that's what I am. All right, I'm gonna play for you a clip and then I'm gonna point out that during particular points in time, uh, during the clip uh, where I experience the same thing and give you uh, a bit more uh, of a concrete example. Here we go. Story folks, uh, CNN has been taken to court for allegedly practicing racism. Dwayne Walker is a CNN producer who filed a $50 million lawsuit against the cable news network, Turner Broadcasting, and parent company Time Warner in December 2015, alleging racial discrimination. He still works there. Now other black, former and current employees have joined him in his class action lawsuit. Uh, it reached in part, quote, the company has a pervasive pattern and practice of systemic and continuing employment discrimination against African Americans with respect to opportunities for advancement, leadership, and promotions. A lawsuit goes on to say the company has created a schematic that requires African Americans to generally labor three times as long as Caucasians to receive any type of promotion, and even when a promotion is obtained, African Americans are denied by the proverbial glass ceiling, almost always failing to reach the highest levels of Turner's network. Now, you can substitute a lot of Fortune 500 companies, okay, uh, for uh, Turner uh, Network. You can substitute a lot of uh, financial uh, companies for Turner Network. I can tell you for a fact exactly what this gentleman is alleging is exactly what I experienced, not in one financial company, not in two financial companies, but in all three of the financial companies that I work for, okay? As far as having to work uh, three times as hard to obtain the same position that a person of uh, not African-American descent uh, was quote unquote given, okay, being superior, and you're gonna see uh, this particular case being made, being superior to a person that uh, was quote unquote given a job uh, at various companies. We come across that all the time. And hopefully with this lawsuit uh, being filed and I hope making it to a jury and the proper verdict being rendered, I hope that a light is going to be shined on a lot of these companies that are doing that. We're consistently told that we need to work hard. Well, we do work hard. In fact, we have to work harder to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. Well, it's kind of hard to pull yourself up by your bootstraps when uh, the bootstrap basically is only of a certain length and in a lot of the instances is being cut so that uh, you, you can no longer pull yourself up. But anyway, I digress. Let's continue with this particular clip. Joining me from Atlanta via FaceTime is Daniel Meacham, the attorney for the players. Uh, and Daniel, first of all, thanks for joining us on TV One. Good morning, Roland. How are you? So first and foremost, let's let, let's take us through this because first of all, there have been several employees uh, that have actually filed lawsuits against CNN. 
Uh, Dwayne is one of them. You, you, you don't represent Dwayne, correct? Or do I do represent Dwayne. You do represent Dwayne. There, there, there are other cases where there are other attorneys involved, correct? Uh, there is my co-counsel, Mario Williams, uh, that's involved. So it's two of us uh, as the named uh, counsels on this case. Now, uh, also in this particular case, uh, in, in this particular case, uh, my understanding, as I was reading uh, Rodney Ho's uh, article previously in the Land Journal Constitution, a number of other black employees have filed EEOC complaints against CNN. It, it, uh, there, there have been numerous EEOC complaints against CNN over the course of, if you looked at over the course of the past two years, there have been numerous EEOC complaints filed by employees at uh, CNN. Now, in terms of so full disclosure, I worked at CNN for six, six years as a contributor, uh, and also I believe that you guys sent uh, a subpoena to TV1 uh, seeking my testimony in a deposition. Uh, that is being fought by CNN? Uh, no, they have not fought it at this point, Roland. Okay. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's still early. Uh, it's still early, but... Uh, uh, it's you know the, the discovery period is still going on in Dwayne's case. It should be over uh, the end of January, uh, and probably as it relates to the trial uh, is the time that we'll probably subpoena you to come in and testify. So, so what are you seeking? What are you seeking? Uh, and also, how long have you been taking depositions? And what have you discovered in these depositions? Well, what I did, Roland, uh, and what uh, Mario did, and I'm sorry, I think my... Don't, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, just keep talking. Don't worry about it. Okay, uh, what, what we did is uh, about three years ago, uh, Dwayne came to us, uh, came to me, and asked me to look into representing him in this discrimination suit. And at that time, because of my caseload, uh, I could not do it. Uh, he came back to me a couple of years later, and I told him this was a case that had to be proven from a statistical point of view because the theory would have to be disparate impact. That is, that nobody's going to bring in a noose or call you the N-word, but the treatment is such where the disparate impact shows that there is a, a disparity between how Caucasians are treated in the workforce and how African Americans or Blacks are treated in the workforce. We obtained uh, that information, statistical information, and in fact, uh, CNN and Turner uh, produced a human resource diversity trends report uh, that we attached at our, in our class action suit. And within their own study, it shows the disparity in pay, the disparity in the times of promotion. That is, that it would take uh, a black person an average of seven years promotion when it would take a white person three years. That even if they were similarly situated, there was a disparity in pay and that Blacks generally did not get be, be above the mid-level management of manager. Uh, and so when I got that statistical information, uh, and, and we had been, my firm had been bombarded by people asking us to represent them. Let me stop that right there. Okay. Um, in the corporate world, and I don't know how many of you uh, actually uh, work within the corporate world, but I, I can tell you for a fact, any time, any time uh, raise period comes around and various reviews are done the very first words out of uh, the manager or person responsible for providing you with increased compensation okay and that could even be personnel they tell you not to discuss uh, your raise or how much you make with anybody at the company okay you know why they do that? So that people aren't aware of what's going on and the disparity, genes, uh, disparity between various employees, especially employees doing the same thing. And that has been going on, uh, I'm trying to think, 19, I experienced it as far back as 1976, let's say. So, uh, but, and that's one of the main reasons. Now, if you're familiar with the uh, Ledbetter lawsuit, that's where a woman uh, sued and basically won in federal uh, court, actually went all the way to the Supreme Court. She was suing for uh, income uh, discrimination. 
i.e. she was doing the same job I guess as a male was doing for numerous years she finally discovered what was going on and she wanted uh, to uh, just get parity with what should have uh, been happening so she turned around and sued her employers the uh, employer challenged it by saying she had waited too long to sue but it ultimately went to the Supreme Court which sided in her favor because how you know you need to know what's going on in order to know that you're being discriminated against okay and since she wasn't aware that they were screwing her how could she in turn file a lawsuit or fight in, in order to get uh, equality as far as income was concerned anyway they they found in her uh, they found in her behalf so that's just a little lesson on why and what happens uh, when people aren't aware of exactly what's going on because companies uh, choose to try to keep a certain segment down and since everything is done in the dark that certain segment is not aware that they're being screwed we decided that there were enough people after having filed Dwayne's uh, lawsuit that there were enough people to join in a class action and since this has been filed my firm uh, has informed me that we have gotten over 45 calls for people wanting to come in and ask me to review their case and see if they can join in on the class action suit so this is pervasive and this has been going on for quite some time. Now, um, this class action lawsuit covers people who have worked there from, what, 1997 to present day? Yes. And is that only, is it only salary employees or full-time employees, or are you looking to expand this beyond that? No, it, it's, it's throughout the entire um, workforce of CNN and Turner and Time Warner. So, uh, so this goes. So this goes beyond just uh, CNN. You're talking about all of the other networks uh, they own as well. Um, uh, obviously, uh, first of all, CNN has declined comment uh, to a number of media organizations. Uh, and uh, have you had any folks on the news side uh, who have who have come forward who are participating in this class action lawsuit, or is it folks who are on the business side? There have been both, Roland. Uh, I, I would uh, tell you that the people on the news side, those people that are reporters or anchors, are terrified, if, if, for lack of a better word, to put their names out there because there's such a black ball stigma once you go down this road. But we've talked to a number of people, both on the business and the news side. Um, also, when you talk about uh as far as that black ball stigma is concerned, he is absolutely right. Uh, I want to relate a case of uh, one person that I know very, very well. And sorry, folks, I got a phone call. Anyway, um, relating back to uh, being blackballed, I have a person who uh, was very, really young. But he had a particular knack for uh, mechanics uh, and mechanical engineering, okay? As a matter of fact, this person was um, working in a subservient position for uh, an oil uh, company tool maker. And he happened to be passing uh, one of their uh, main uh, engineers as far as... Uh, tool construction was concerned and they were having a problem making this oil tool this person black person took a look at the design and just instinctively knew that the design was wrong now he had no college he was just a high school uh, uh, graduate okay but he had an extraordinary capacity for things mechanical the person okay who had designed the faulty tool took one look at this person and started berating him and telling him he didn't know his ass from a hole in the ground etc 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 now things could have gone really bad it just so happens that the owner of the company 
uh, happen to be passing. The owner comes over to see what the commotion is. The quote-unquote white uh, engineer uh, starts berating the black uh, person. The black person in his defense says, all I said was that uh, the design was wrong on that tool. The owner of the company turns around, looks at the design, looks at the white guy, looks at the black guy, and asks the black guy, how do you know that? Well, black guy says, because of, and he explained how he knew it. Now, this guy, again, no college, no you know advanced trade school, just a high school diploma, but that's how good this guy was. The owner turned to the white guy and told him that the black employee was 100% right and he had screwed up the tool. The owner then went to the black guy and said, um, I'm sending you to school. Okay, he turned around and sends the kid, because the, the kid was only 18 years old, sends the kid to school. Kid does like a year, two years of, of schooling. Meanwhile, he's still working at, at the company in a slightly better position. They're paying him a little bit more money, okay? And he, his, he has new duties, not the same duties that he had. He uh, comes out of that school and quickly becomes their golden child, i.e., this kid was so good, they were flying him all over the world to take a look at situations, figure out what type of a tool was needed, design the tool, they would build the tool, and obviously utilize the tool with various oil rigs, oil platforms, etc. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong, they, you know, when, when he started doing this, they did give him, you know, some decent money. But they didn't give him top of the line money commensurate with everything that he was doing. Okay, so he got wind of, you know, what he actually should be making. And, you know, he went to him and said that he needed, you know, a substantial raise. Well, they didn't want to do it. So, he went out and marketed his skills. He got a job at another company, or I take that back, he got an offer of employment for an, from another company. And he uh, was set to give his notice, which he did. The owner of the company that he was working for was so pissed off that he went to the owner of the company that was going to employ this guy and blackballed him. And then he blackballed him throughout that particular industry. It was so bad that he couldn't get a job as a dog catcher in that particular industry. Now, fortunately, he survived because, you know, he had superior skills throughout a various uh, range of uh, disciplines, let us say. And he was able to uh, parlay those skills uh, into um, money-making ventures so that, you know, he could make his mortgage payment. He had a wife and a uh, couple of kids. So um, was his income reduced for a while? Yes, it was. Was he able to recover? Yes, uh, he did. Did the company later on, after he got out of the industry, run into a big problem and they contacted him and offered him uh, a, a job at the proper uh, pay scale? Yes, they did. Did he tell them to go to hell? Yes, he did. And he has not uh, suffered for that decision. But anyway, that's just an example. There are a lot of examples I can give you. It's according to uh, what you discovered, that there is no African-American who is a VP or higher. That uh, is, he he yeah, here's the deal. Uh, don't, 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 um, yeah, don't worry about your camera. Uh, we'll just, just keep talking. Okay. Uh... I think that there was one VP that we saw, and I don't want to misstate the, the, the facts, but we found that there were less than three blacks that were VPs, and I think that there's only one. In fact, 
One of the examples that we use in the uh, the class action suit that there was a personal candidate for the VP of Human Resources job who had uh, a PhD, the VP job in Human Resources. So we thought that that smacked uh, in the face of qualifications. You know, a lot of times people. All right, and that's the piece that really uh, slapped me upside the head. Same situation happened to me. Uh, I was working in Los Angeles. I was a manager. Uh, we hired a person at a uh, low level um, into my department, okay? And I had good relationships with pretty much everybody within my department. This person, um, you know, was, was a really good guy, and I obviously I helped train him up. Uh, he worked for me, did a great job, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The person happened to be of uh, Hispanic background, but he didn't speak any Spanish. So he just happened to have a, his, uh, a Hispanic uh, uh, surname. Anyway, a position came up, which was a an increase, okay? And it was a significant uh, title uh, bump as well. And it dealt with relocation to, of all places where I am now, Dallas, uh, Texas. Well, obviously, um, I applied for the job because I obviously wanted uh, to get that stature bump. He applied for the job along with several other people. Now, I had been working in the industry 10 years longer than him, had uh, my degrees, etc., 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 and I had. Um, obviously experience and contacts. He obviously had been working uh, for a shorter period of time and for whatever reason it was, they decided to pick him. <laughs> okay, um, now I initially thought, well, uh, maybe it had something to do with the market or whatever. No, nah, no, 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 no. And to prove the point uh, that uh, they really didn't uh, want to treat everyone equally, uh, the employee that they put into that position in Texas as the manager of that particular office lasted exactly one year in that position. Another position opened up within the overall structure of the company he applied for and obtained that position, and then they shut down the uh, position uh, of manager of that office. So now, you tell me. <laughs> anyway, that ju that's just one of my own personal stories. I got a ton of them. Well, the company should be most concerned with people that are most qualified, and we would agree. Uh, but there have been people most qualified and not given the opportunity or passed over. So how many people right now are a part of uh, this lawsuit? We have 10, we have two named defendants, but we have 25 people that we are going to uh, put forward to the court that are uh, class action members and represent a larger group of people uh, that will that will potentially become part of this lawsuit. What are some of the, so, so I, I was looking at the press release uh, that you sent out. Uh, what are some of the things that you have discovered uh, in uh, in discovery? Is this based upon um, uh, comments made by people? Is it based upon emails? Um, in terms of uh, in terms of what you discovered. Well, in the discovery process, obviously you get you, you get all kind of documentation. But what we have discovered is. I think that I probably, in one week, talked to about 15 uh, African-American employees that said that there were jobs that were available in their departments that they never were aware of. In other words, there was no posting. Although Human Resources says that there was a posting, they never were, was aware of the job being posted. So then there are people that come in, get the jobs, there are blacks who are there, qualified, working there, more experienced don't even get an opportunity to apply for the job. There are people, there was an individual that came in my office, Roland, that I think that had worked at CNN for more than 12, 13 years, and over that 13 year period had gotten a $5,000 raise, uh, while other people were getting merit increase raises far in excess 
of what he was getting. Uh, and that is not unusual. I am here to tell you. They will call a person in that they like every six months or so, give them a, a merit increase, okay? Meanwhile, somebody else that's out there on the floor, i.e. a black person, is busting their ass, and they're lucky to see an annual uh, review and increase. So what he just said is absolutely true. I've seen it for myself, and I have not experienced that merit increase but because I had made friends, I was told about merit increases. And then finally, when I got to uh, management, okay, I became aware of how that merit increase uh, process uh, is unevenly, unevenly applied. Uh, so it's, it's, it's those kinds of continued uh, complaints uh, that we have seen in evidence uh, that has supported what we're trying to do in this class action suit. There are comments, there was one comment that was made uh, where a supervisor said, well, I guess it's a black thing. And I don't know what a black thing is, other than if you're talking about an object that is the color black, but there was a black thing as if to uh, infer that there was some sort of code conversation and language or actions that only black people understood amongst themselves. So those kinds of, uh, uh, of actions and, and uh, supervision uh, and denial of opportunity is what this class action suit's about. I, the one thing that I, I thought that was most telling is that there are people who know that maybe from a time point of view, they can't participate in the class action, but have been asking, can we just come in and give you other information that will help you in this, in this class action suit? So there's a lot of there's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of frustration in the, in the workforce currently and former at CNN. Um, last question, uh, you've done lots of cases. Uh, anything in this particular case that was surprising to you or shocking to you? Yes, the number of people that had the same thing to say, which is why, listen, I practice employment law from a defense point of view. My intro into employment discrimination case was defending uh, the employer. So when I scrutinize a case, I'm always asking uh, for the holes in a case. And I consistently receive the same kind of complaints across the board in a lot of different de departments within CNN. And when I saw the, st the statistical information that was generated by their human resources that confirmed all the things that we were saying, there was no question in my mind that we were going to do a class action suit. It was just the point of putting it together where we can overcome any motions for summary judgment and get this case in front of a jury. Daniel Meacham, uh, we surely appreciate it. Thank you so very much. See, and that's the part that you love. Their own statistical data is what uh, is going to be used to hang them because they knew full well what they were doing and if they didn't, that means that they were ignoring their own numbers, which they're paid to analyze and react to their own numbers. But um, the next time uh, somebody talks about uh, people not willing to work and being lazy, you bring this one up where uh, we work three times as hard and can barely get uh, up to where someone who is a lot less talented uh, can get to merely because we're black and they're not.